I sit back? Can you hear me from here? I don't know if it's loud enough. It seems like there's some audio. Uh, yeah, it's soft. It is soft. Where's that picture of uh, Swole Petey? You really want to find that. <laughs> Aha, here we go. Look at that. Swole Petey. <laughs> Feel bad for anybody just jumping into the stream randomly. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be so confused. Uh, anytime, anytime someone joins, I'm just gonna switch back over to this. Man, this loading bar feels like it takes forever. I don't have an iPhone, so I'm actually not sure how to keep audio going. Um, I have an iPhone, but I don't. Can you do like picture in picture from Twitch? I don't. I don't think you can. At least I don't know if even on Android you can. Um, although I was somehow able to keep ESPN audio going today while I was at the gym. Oh, this dr oh this loading bar is taking forever. Eh. There we go. Arbitrary loading bar. It was definitely not full. Okay. Um, so let's take a look over here. Like I was saying, let's look at my... Um, so my, I'm drafting today. Today I'm going to be drafting... So we're doing a 10-person to start here. 10-person Yahoo standard categories, which means goals, assists, plus minus, power play points, shots on goal, and hits. Uh, and then for goaltenders, we are looking at uh, wins... Goal, goals against average, save percentage, and shutouts. Those are the important things there. Um, and then I'm going to be drafting using my own tool um, that we built out. I fixed a few things today that were kind of broken, which is annoying. Um, but it should be working pretty well now. Uh I am going to be using a blend of a ton of different projections. So I'm going to be using um, Cam Robinson's point projections, Dom's point projections, Dauber, Rotowire, and I think I'm missing somebody. I'm not exactly who, quite sure who it is. Who is my third one? Let me see. Cam Robinson, Dauber, Rotowire, Scott Cullen, and Laidlaw, Scott Laidlaw. Um, so those are the people I'm going to be using. So I'm drafting from the fifth position and we've talked about this a lot and that that might be the worst position of the year so we'll see how this works out um Connor mcdavid goes first overall kind of makes sense um so you know I, I i would fill out this draft board here but i'm not going to i'm just going to come back to this and try to keep up with who's gone kucherov goes again uh since brandon's not on here i'm going to I'm going to mostly talk more strategy. And it looks like Mike might have gotten kicked out because he wasn't there as it loaded, which makes no sense. Yahoo, come on. Let people get back into their, into their drafts here. Um, okay, so then McKinnon goes. That's a very obvious top three in McDavid, Kucherov, McKinnon. Although, again, if we go back to kind of my rankings, I have OV1 overall. So I'll definitely be taking him if he comes to me. Uh, okay, my turn. Uh, Patrick Kane goes. Nice. That means I get my number one ranked player and who I wanted. And I actually, um, when I went through kind of everyone's projections and I was saying kind of how I, I averaged out like Laidlaw, uh, Dom, and everybody else, um, after averaging them all out, um, I went back and adjusted for shooting percentage because, for example, they had something, they had uh, Tom Wilson. Like once I averaged everybody out, this was with average, which is what's crazy to me. So after averaging them all out, Tom Wilson had like a 17% shooting, which was just insane. It made no sense. So, yeah, 
I went back and adjusted all the shooting percentages. So these are kind of with those new adjusted shooting percentages to me. Uh, and someone misclicked <laughs> Patrick Kane. I know you misclicked. I know you meant to click uh, Evander Kane. Oh, man. Uh, Marshan goes, Crosby, Pasternak, then Vasilevsky, ninth. Makes sense. Then Burns and Bishop. I love that turn, actually, of Burns, Bishop. I'll try to get closer to my mic. Uh, here, I have some books over here. If I raise the microphone, is that better? Stephen Stamkos. One second see if this helps deep deep blacks today oh there we go mike is back in now he has made it to the draft um i don't the reason i like that turn of burn i, I like getting burns i probably would have taken it forward instead of bishop there but i do like that i actually like in the 10th person i like the turn at the end there of like a burns and then bishop kind of some kind of turn um, can you guys hear me better now? I know people on Twitch were saying they couldn't hear me. Uh, let me know if you can hear me now better. I got closer to the mic. Um, Taylor Hall, then Landis Gog. So let's take a look at kind of who's still out there. Um, I should be filling this out, to be honest. Sagan went, which was right here. Crosby, Stamkos. I actually might go Wheeler. Even though he's just... Yeah, let's just do it. Not get autoed here. A little bit of a reach, but I'm okay with that. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that one, but it's fine. I last time I think in a tenth person I went Goudreau there, but I my rankings were all kind of messed up and kind of broken. So whatever. I like I like Wheeler there. I get a right wing as well, uh, which is kind of what I wanted. So. I kind of know who all the fifth. The fifth is a weird place to draft. Goudreau did go pretty soon after me. There's Drysital and Goudreau, Tavares, and Eric Carlson. I'm gonna try to just kind of. Last time I drafted, I went very goalie defensive heavy, which actually turned out to be a pretty nice draft. I was happy with that. Um, this time I'm gonna try to stick to my rankings a little bit and really try to get the best guy I want. So it's crazy because Burns is here. And the next defenseman is all the way down here in Carlson, 52nd. So really what this is telling me is wait on defense until way later. I think I know who I want next. Uh, Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews is going really low. Or really high. High, low, low. Um, hmm. Tarasenko at 22nd. Feels a little early. I don't know if that. Ah, 18. That's fine. Rontanen. Rontanen's fallen too a little bit. Um, okay, so I have. Did, was Aho taken? He was not taken yet. Ooh, interesting. Um, so I do like Sebastian Aho here. The thing I like the most about. Although I think the guy I actually want is Eichel here. This is, seems like a. Perfect place to do it. And I shore up a center. Um, so Eichel for me is ranked right here. He's 12th according to my ranking. 16. He finished 16th the last year in these same. Um, guys, I'm pretty sure. Let's look up. Let's show drafted. Go back to 2018, 2019. And they, again, you know, uh, he was 37th according to Yahoo. Well, they count plus minus. I'm not drafting with plus minus. I'm pretending plus minus. Straight up doesn't exist. I don't like drafting with stuff like that. Um, so for me, my rankings that I'm using are going to be different from Yahoo's mostly because Yahoo is actually counting, uh, plus minus. And I quite frankly don't care about plus minus. Marner there is a great pick at 29th. I was eyeing him too. I wonder where I have Marner actually in mine. Uh, right here. He's 20th. Okay. Gensel, Sergei Bobrovsky, Victor Hedman. Victor Hedman feels, uh, see, this is why I always say, like, when we give advice on the podcast, it's don't, 
don't just go like Hedman here is 70th according to this, and then guys like Latang are above him. You've got guys like John Carlson above him. Mm. I'm debating going. Uh, this is tough. I want to. I'm thinking of maybe going defense or goaltender here. Uh, I do like Aho a lot, a lot, a lot. So we're kind of around this area here. The problem is that there's guys like you know there's guys like um, Drew went already. Where's Larkin? Like Larkin's here. He's a great center option for later. He's one of those guys that you can sleep on because he's around ninety first. It's because of that plus minus. If you forget about plus minus, you should be fine there. Uh, let's look at what goaltenders are still out there. Pick a major, but eh, don't want to go there. Barkov would have been my pick, um, probably. So I like. Ah, da, 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 da. The tang is not gone, so everyone's reaching for defensemen. I'm just gonna reach and get what I think is one of the best defensemen on the board, in Latang. Um, he was the next best by my rankings after uh, Eric Carlson. And since, you know, defensemen are going off the board, John Carlson's right here, I'm happy to get uh, Latang early. That's fine. Then Ajo went right after. It sucks. But that's okay. Like I said, I, I short up with Eichel. I think that the way to do this year's draft is get, it seems like so far, get one elite player at each position, and then the one position to kind of fade is goaltender. But you want to get kind of one of those tier two kind of goalies, like Carey Price, um, I would love to get Bobrovsky. That's kind of like my main target because I think he's going to go around third goaltender, which is good because you can react. So you see guys like uh, you see guys like Bishop go off the board. You see guys like Vashlevsky go off the board, which allows you to kind of react and say, okay, now I'm taking Bobrovsky. But then in other positions, you can do the same thing. So you have one elite defenseman, one elite wing. And so I'm, that's how I'm kind of doing this draft is I'm trying to just shore up all my positions from the fifth spot in the middle of the draft. I hate drafting from the fifth. Um, it's kind of why I did it, to try to present myself a little bit of a challenge. But, oh, knocked over my mic. Hmm. So now we're seeing guys like Matthew Kachuk, Brain Point. Brain Point is going shockingly close to value, if not below. Um, so I have him 28th here. So I think if I get... Line A would be my next pick if he gets to me here, um, which I think he will unless Drove steals him. But that's who I think I'd like next. You see guys like Matthews, Giroux, that's pretty good company. Malkin, I just don't need a center. Gensel's obviously gone. Uh, March is out there, but against ADP of 71.3, right? Um, so Line A feels like this is right about 45th. Uh, line A was taken. Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, makes my life a little bit difficult. Uh, let's see, goaltenders. I could shore up. Yeah, I'll take Gibson here. Get volume. That's fine. I'll just do like what I was saying. I'm going to take uh, one elite player at each position. So now each position is loaded up. Larkin obviously being one of my favorite centers there. And then let me let me get a few goaltenders here that I like. Obviously, Matt Murray, Carter Hart. Connor Hellebuck is getting faded way too hard. I love Morgan Riley that late. I, I'm shocked uh, Morgan Riley's falling as far as he is. Uh, granted, you know, let's let's see where he is here. Morgan Riley's at 106 in my projections. Um, let's sort this by ADP, actually. If this doesn't break, fingers crossed. It doesn't. Okay, good. Um just so we can kind of get an idea of where we're at in the draft here. So let's go back to wingers here. So I'd like to get some, obviously, like March so. Big on Forsberg, although he's more of like, he's like a 70-ish point guy. Of course, one of Andrew Kane and Brady Kachuk. Those two are huge for me. So they're both left wings. Those are my biggest targets. Uh, and around them, there's fine kind of consolation prizes that I, I call them. Like if there's a, you know, if I miss out on Kachuk or Kane, I can get a Skinner and Arvidsson, something like that. So that's okay. Um, let's take a look at right wings here and what's out there. Uh, you have a guy like Radulov, Lindholm. I think Radulov is, is a great pick here. Uh, 44th. 
going around 66th, and this is going to be my 55th-ish pick. Might be a good idea to reach a tad for Radulov here. If we go back to defensemen, you have guys like Dumba, Pulak, Hamilton. Yeah, this would be a lot of reaching. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I like going Radulov here, because if I look at the right wings that I like, I, I obviously like Stone, I like Hoffman, but I don't like any as much as I like Rad. What is Danny saying? Okay, I'm right there. It's a plus minus. It's always going to hurt me because I just don't care about it. I, I don't draft using plus minus. Um, which is fine. It's still tied for three and a half. Not bad. I'll take that. Hmm. Timo Meyer. That's a great one. I wonder where I have Meyer. I have him 47th. Yeah, I like him a lot. Little bit of a reach by ADP, but that's okay. I would have done that too. Um, now the right wing, of course, I like Paul Mary. Let's find. I always will highlight Kako because he's not projected. So on Yahoo, he's a steal right now, as is. What defenseman do I like? Let's take a look at defensemen here. Uh, ba -ba. It's Cleary and why is there a right wing defenseman? That's probably uh Brendan Smith. Okay, so you've got guys like Yossi Subban. Um, see, he's going really high relative to his ADP. Darlene is actually an, is a good pick here. I like Darlene at some point. Um. Guy like Drew Doughty at 86. That's a pretty good value right there. Dougie Hamilton, 82nd. Uh, guys like Risto, 88. I don't know if I buy the Risto love though because Risto's. Risto's whatever. We got a question on Twitch about if uh, I think any RFAs are going to miss a couple regular season games. I think so. I think that a lot of what we're seeing with RFAs is they're waiting for Marner to hold out. And again, this is this is saying this with like no, no true kind of sense in terms. I don't have like insider info or anything. So we're seeing defense go a lot here. I'm gonna take Darlene and react to that real quick. I, let me go on a tangent and I'm gonna take Darlene. Get another defenseman. So I'm happy with that. Uh, so again, no, you know, no insider info for me or anything like that. But I think that the Marner situation is going to hold out and players gonna wait. I think players are going to wait to see what happens with Marner because it's not worth being that guy who gets underpaid. Uh, every agent is telling these guys, wait. And it's a smart thing to do. So I do think we'll see a few. Um, I don't know how many. It's tough to say. I'm drafting under the... I drafted Nylander last year, and it really hurt me because of how long he waited. And to be honest, that kind of scared me a little bit. It, uh, it I don't know. It, it's left me this season not really wanting to take RFAs like... I think that I think there's a difference between, for example, the Marner situation, and the Braden Point situation. I think what's going to happen with Point, for example, is he'll wait until he, like the last minute, until he can, and then I think he's going to be the first domino to fall if Marner isn't. If Marner isn't the first domino to fall, then they'll do, you know, then then I think Point will just sign. I think Point wants to play. I think it's clear that Point wants to stay in Tampa. He just wants to have as much leverage as possible. Uh, Ronton and Hund. I don't know about Ronton. Besser, I think it's clear he wants to stay, and they're close on term and everything. Uh, so I think Besser will sign too. Ronson, I think, is the biggest question mark because he's probably the best comparable to uh, Marner. Um, I know Point just had his ridiculous season, but quite frankly, I don't see Point as a Marner-type player. I see Ronton as pretty similar to to Point. And the thing, too, that, Mar that Ronson has is Colorado has cap space. So he has a lot of leverage there. So I'd say of all of them, the ones that would probably scare me the most are Rontanen and um, Rontanen and uh, Marner, of course. But yeah, Besser, I, I'm not afraid of. I Someone said that there's rumors that Besser is close to signing. I agree with those. I think there's enough smoke there to assume that, yes, he's he's close to signing. Um, and when there's enough smoke like that, I usually I tend to believe it. Okay, and Besser just goes. Um, so Bergeron, Lindholm. Monahan, Barry. So Monahan going that late is crazy. Then Murray goes. Man, Murray is going so late. I love it. Okay. 
so here I'm picking in the 76th. Uh, so if I go just to all players real quick, uh, you see kind of the guys that I have lined up here. Now, I was... Uh, I'm going to go... Lark. Just I'm gonna reach there. Now I do think I maybe made a mistake here. Uh, again, that you know thirty second pick clock. I'm curious to see if, for a few guys like where Shifley is fiftieth. So I probably should have taken Shifley there. Um, but I think Larkin is higher than that, according to what I have. Uh. uh oh yeah, Larkin is twenty fifth. By my rankings, so I'm I'm fine reaching for Larkin, even if I don't get Shifley. Where's Pedersen? Uh, Pedersen is 36. So that's fine, but I, I just don't want to be over an index on centers. And one of those guys probably falls to me if I really really want him. Um, and Pedersen, if I remember correctly, is going to have more off night, so I may just go Pedersen. Um, Beaver asked, uh, traded a lot of high picks last year to make a run, so I have a lot of late picks this year. Any advice for drafting in the later rounds? Uh, yeah, if it's, it depends on your team composition. I'd say that my advice for drafting in the later rounds, damn, Kane went, that's what I wanted. Um, my advice for trading or kind of drafting in the later rounds if you traded last year to make a big run is you probably have a pretty good core. Your core is probably pretty set. Um, and so because of that, what you want to do is make sure to, when you do your research, research what your team's composition is. Are you strong in hits? Are you strong in shots? Where are you strong? Where are you weak? Uh, and draft with that intention. Like say you have, well, let me make a pick here. Um, so I've got my right wings. I don't have my left wings yet. Uh, I think for me here, Brady is the, is the best. Brady is the best. Um, so anyways, yeah, if you're drafting in the later rounds, just know kind of what you're going for. I think go in with a game plan of what you need to address. So what, where are your faults uh, and what do you need to go for? For example, if you have like a Ben already that has some good peripherals, then you know going into those later rounds that you don't have to worry too much about peripherals. Like obviously they matter, but for the most part, you're in a pretty good spot. Man, Spanish had going that late. Good too. Uh, center is so deep this year. So that, that, that would be my advice. Um, what you want to do is... Is kind of no ex have a game plan for what you're going to tackle. Do you need kind of multi cap monsters? Do you need more points guys? That kind of thing. That would be my advice, at least in a categories league like this. And then there was another question going off of that one. Uh, any advice for deeper drafts? Yeah, I think for deeper drafts, it it depends on roster spots. Uh, that would be kind of my thing is understand your roster spots. Usually deeper drafts mean usually deeper drafts will mean one of two things. Either you have a lot of teams so you, let's say you're in a 20 something team league or something like that or you just have really deep rosters so a lot of starting spots a lot of bench spots um, ultimately what you want to do in those kinds of deep drafts is towards the end I like filling holes and so I try to get specialists in certain areas at least that's what I did in my dynasty so I'd get a guy like Chris Russell at the time who's blocking like crazy uh, obviously doesn't offer much else but will kind of shore up those. So you kind of know where your holes are and just kind of plug holes because at the end of the day, a lot of those, a lot of, okay, so it's a 10 team, 28 roster spot. Perfect. So in those kinds of situations, um, usually when you have that deep of roster spots, you can get away with just having specialists. And that's what I like to do in very deep part of the drafts because at the, at the end of the day, what's the worst case scenario? You drop them. That's fine. Um, I think people try to go and you like, I think upside and specialists are the two places that I try to target in very deep rosters, because if you try to get too cute and you try to look for too much value, sometimes you make the mistake of kind of taking guys that aren't actually going to produce for you. They're like good players at, at, the drafts at the end. People just get enamored with like, Oh, but they're so good. It doesn't matter if they don't do anything for you. It's, it's not worth it. Uh, okay. My turn here. So I am, I'm leaning defense, but let's take a look really quick before I see. So Pulak to me is actually one of my favorite defensemen this year, and he's there. I might as well take Pulak because if I look at kind of my the forwards, a lot of the forwards I like I can still get later, uh, and I can still get Risto late and be my last defense would be awesome because I already have almost everything kind of locked up. So, uh. Pedersen goes after that. That's fine. If I hadn't, you know, the Eichel 
pick, I don't know anymore. I think going into the actual season, I'm going to fade centers pretty damn hard. Um, it's just not worth taking. It's weird. It's a weird, weird world. Uh, okay, so then we've got guys like Kreider still out there. Trocek's on my bench. I'm going to try to go for high upside guys here. So obviously guys like Kako I like late. Um, Andrews Lee goes. Tyler Bertuzzi is a good one. Uh, let's see what I have Tyler Bertuzzi at. I have him at 170, so not really worth it. Uh, Nyquist, 132. Dustin Brown, has he gone yet? Probably not yet. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, Vincent Trocek, 101. Ugh. I wish. I wish he weren't center only. I would make, but again, centers are just so deep. It's ridiculous. Um, another guy I think is getting faded a little too hard here that I'm just going to mark as a watch is Gusev. I don't know what I have him at. I think I'm going to take, he's a really good, just kind of on the bench upside guy. He's 149, but he's going, you know, 17th round sort of, uh, that's kind of exactly what you want. Nico is an interesting one. Um, got guys like Nino Niederreiter who has a lot of upside. But here, I'm actually going to go, I'm going to reach, because I'm at my, okay, so I like Svetch. I could take Svetch. I could, if I wanted to. Uh, but let's take a defenseman here really quick, and then none of them are called Svetch. Yeah, the guys I want on defense, I can go later. I'm just going to reach this here. Because you see guys like Kale McCarr going, um, Chabot went... It's just Gustafson, just a little bit of youth starting to go. So I just want to kind of shore up getting Svechnikov and make sure I get him. Oh, my bad. Is the, is, yeah, this is too big. Hold on. Let me fix this window. Someone said they couldn't see the latest pick. Um, that should fix it now, I think. Let me see. There you go. Now you should be able to see it. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks for the heads up, Brandon. Brandon has joined the chat, folks. Yeah, Tyler Bertuzzi is a great a great spot. Um, I like him a lot. I'm trying to figure out exactly why I have him ranked so low here. Um, so I have him at 170. He finished 188. I think it's because just people, the projections I have for him don't really have him doing much else from last year. Let's take a look here. Uh, ah, I spelled Bertuzzi wrong. So they have him. F I have him for 50 points. Um. 11 power play points. I believe this is Pims. Yeah. So 44 Pims. Not that many. 143 shots. 86 blocks. Or er, hits, sorry. Um, yeah. He's whatever. Eh. He's not fantastic. They're not. He's just kind of one of those guys who uh, does whatever. He's on the top line, but doesn't get that many points. Uh Jeff Skinner. Okay. I wanted Skinner. Whatever. Um, okay, so Brandon is jumping into the next one, folks. I don't know what spot he's going to get, but we'll try. We'll do another one. So Hoffman, Couture goes. Uh, you see, this is where the, the tool now gets, towards the end of a draft, a draft board tool like this gets really interesting because... It'll start to mark off all the players drafted, so you can sort by either ADP or rank, and you can look by position and see what positions haven't been drafted. So I maybe the next draft I'll do a better job of filling that in. Um, okay, so I, I'm i not going to go defense on this one, actually. I have a left wing, right wing situation already going well. Um so I think I'm actually going to take, I think Paul Mary is getting faded too hard. Lots of shots, lots of hits, a lot of point upside. Um, um, yeah, I like that. Compliments to Wheeler and Radulov really well. Yeah, I'm shocked Paul Mary fell to 116. I mean, there's a lot of surprises this year that are falling. Um, but I'm trying to scroll back here and see some uh, sucks. Uh, Trocheck at 101 is insane in a league like this. Mm. 
Nylander. Let's take a look at my defenseman here. Um, I need one more defense, and I want to go kind of upside. Let's take a look at the defense out here, and then we can look up who's available still. Um, Darlene Weber. Let's go back to defense here and see who's who's high. Who was good last year? Nobody. Miro. Hughes. Uh, Wierenski. Hmm. Where do I have Wierenski this year? 142. Hughes, 238. Yeesh. Probably because of no peripherals. Yeah, you see, this makes me not... Ooh, Goss Bear. Yep. Upside. Thank you. Didn't even see him. Where is he on my... How, how low do I have him? See, I have him 134. That's a pretty good pick for a, for a defenseman right there. I'll take that. I mean, granted, Wierenski's there too, so not that different. But I think that Goth Ghost has way more upside, and he's a he's my final uh, starter position. So I'll take that. Ghost is fair, followed by Nugent Hopkins. And then, of course, if this were a real league, I'd actually be looking at Pearson, which they don't even—I don't think they have him on here. I don't think he's in Yahoo yet. Joel Pearson. Can I look up first name? He's not in here. Okay. Sure. This actually, this draft so far has actually gone very different from ones we've seen, we, we've done recently. Um, also, folks, what in the... I mean, if you don't think I'm going Martin Jones with my next pick, if he's still there, you're insane. How in the world is he still there? Makes no sense. Jacob Markstrom as well is a great pick still here. Um, I don't buy the Corey Schneider hype. What was Martin Jones last year in this league? 94th. Why is he still there? I mean, Hank just doesn't play. The, injury, the problem with Hank is he just doesn't play very much. Or as much. Uh, and there's injury risk and all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah, Markstrom last year. I mean, I don't see Markstrom doing that much better than last year. Uh, Martin Jones is definitely going to be my next one if I can get him. Uh, otherwise, I'll wait a little bit on Markstrom. But yeah, it's gone pretty different. I mean, Kako, last um, last time we did a 10-person, definitely went earlier. Uh, people seem to have cooled off on a little, a little bit. Barzell is still there. Again, center being deep. How is Backstrom still there? Let's look at ba what Backstrom is. Yeah. Backstrom, to me, is 63rd. And his ADP is 88. So the fact that he's right now going... It's 134, and he still has not been taken again. <sighs> yeah, I'd take – someone said they'd take Markstrom over Schneider. Same, all day. Uh, I don't I don't buy – like last year, if you look at the issues that were on um, – the issues that played New Jersey were goaltending. That was it. Um, okay, Martin Jones. Thank you for Martin Jones falling to me. Uh, again, Backstrom here is insane. Barzell, where's my Barzell for a, just a standard Yahoo? 90th. See, again, center just kind of falling really far. Uh, who else is on here that I like? Uh, Kyle Connor, where did he go? Kako went by a Ranger fan. Damn it, Richard. Damn you. Uh, okay. JT Miller, Justin Falk. I like Keller. I, I was curious, actually, where I have Keller ranked. Um, also, if the whole going to my sheet is annoying thing, let me know. I can change that and stop going over to my sheet. Um, Liam Carlson is still out there. I like Quinn Hughes has a lot of upside. I'm shocked he hasn't been taken. Especially with, I know there's, I think, two or three Canucks fans in this room. He's also under-projected. Uh, that's... What is he projected for this year? Not a lot of shots. Nar Nurse there is a good pick. So is Mantha. Love the Mantha pick. Especially dual eligibility. Um, so the problem here is I already have a right wing. Otherwise, I'd take... I really want to take Dustin Brown. Because I think there's... Just, man, he fills out your categories so well. Hmm. Okay, Dustin Brown. I don't like the double right wing, but that's okay. I just got to make sure to get a dual eligible or left wing next. So next up, I'd take Gusev or Bertuzzi. Oops. 
with the mic. I'm pretty happy with my team, to be honest. The, they don't like me, but whatever. Yeah, because I have the second worst plus minus. Also, who has the best save percentage? It's for Bishop and Bobrovsky. It's good, good goaltenders. Although I think Bishop still went high, but that's fine. Uh, I'm going to fall farther here because Fur is fourth, and they have two picks still. Where's Jordan? That's the number one team. Oh, now Fur is number one. Let's, let's take a look at this after. Um... Okay, glad people. Okay, so if you like liking, if you like seeing the sheet, I'll keep kind of checking that out. Um, I need to do a better job. Maybe this next time I'll try to fill it out. It's so hard to fill out this draft board uh, in a thirty-second pick clock. It's near impossible to do that and actually keep up. It's, it's so hard. So I'm just gonna keep doing it just this way. I think uh, if it were really a thirty-second pick clock, I'd probably use my sheet to just make rankings. Like uh, pre-draft rankings, and that's it. I keep hitting the mic. Bertuzzi goes, so that means, of course, I'm going to be stuck with Gusev here. Which is fine. I think he's getting faded so hard. Yep, I'll take that. Anderson, Moore, Z. Okay, and we'll do a 12 person after this. I'll go back to the mock and figure that out. Let's, uh, um, how is this to go on? Uh, Schwartzman upset in Zverev. Let's go. Berrettini, have some mercy on Rublev, please. Um, okay, let's go to the mocks here. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, and remember, too, that um, we have these listener leagues uh, starting to go. So if you want to be in these listener leagues, be sure to become a patron, and then you get invites immediately to be able to join these leagues. So we've got one full already. These are close to filling. Then we've got another one that's coming uh, later. But, you know. Love my love my profile picture. Land before Petey. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic image. Look at that. Just keep zooming in on his face. It's fantastic. Um, okay, so let's go back to the mocks here. I'll go back to the actual results in a second here so we can talk about it. Uh, let me just tell you which mock we'll do. So let's join um, Dump and Chase here. In eight minutes. How about that? Uh, where should I draft from? Anyone have any? Anyone want me to draft from a specific position? I'll. Oh, dump and chase. This dump and chase. I don't know why they're both done. the twelve person dump and chase. In case this person joined. Um, okay, someone wants me to draft from seven. I'll draft from seven. I hate drafting from seven. There we go. Okay, so we are in there. Um, Brandon needs to. Let me let me send him a thing here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so Brandon's in. He is drafting from the third spot. He's going to love his team, of course. Now, while we're waiting for this, let's go back over um, and talk about these teams real quick. So who got first, according to them? Jordan got first. So Sagan, uh, Marcheseau, Debrincat, Dadanov, Pasternak, uh, Gallagher, Hedman, Barry, Wierenski, Ryan Ellis, Kuznetsov, Hoffman, Backstrom, um, Simmons, Flurry, and Tuka Rask. So I love these two goaltenders. I'm not sure when... 33rd and 68th. 68th for Rask is fantastic value. That's two great players. Um, I like the defense. Uh, L let's see where I have Ellis, actually. Um, I was curious about him. Um, it's Brendan Ellis. 234 for Ryan Ellis. Mm, okay. Sure. I like Dadnov. Pasta, obviously, Gallagher. There's a lot of guys here. So there's a lot of guys here like Gallagher, Dadnov, who have to kind of live up to expectations. Hedman is fine. I like uh, Barry, I think, is being overprojected like crazy. I don't buy it. Uh, but anyway, I, I like the team. I just think he's being overprojected. Let's go back to my team real quick and see how I did. So, again, another thing that I said... Um, last time was I think I may have taken Eichel not that I took Eichel too early Eichel was obviously proper value he's a first round pick for sure the thing with Eichel is that the centers are so deep there were so many centers later on in the draft that I think offer maybe not as much as Eichel obviously but similar um, especially when you're counting for plus minus and you're counting for hits 
not exactly the same, but very similar. Like you look at a guy like Larkin, right? Uh, less goals, obviously, uh, less assists, so less points, but similar in shots on goal and hits. You can make up some of those deficiencies from the difference between Eichel and Larkin with other players. Um, and that's kind of that's one of the things that I'm kind of seeing here, which is making me think to wait on centers. So I try to every time uh, – oh, Petey. So I try to every time kind of go in with a different strategy. L- last time I just kind of went by my by my rankings as much as I could. Uh, the time before I went very heavy on the defense, which people seem to have enjoyed. I don't know if there's a specific strategy people want me to employ for this one. So um, Brandon would want me to just suck straight up so that he can have the best team. That would be his thing if he were recommending me something. But I think this time I may go... I may try my fade centers pretty hard strategy. See how that goes. Prioritize. Hmm. I did like my strategy last time of getting an elite player at kind of each position. I think I would have rather taken a elite kind of winger at Eichel's position again, even though I already had two wingers. Hmm. Hmm. I have to think about that. Okay, so maybe this time I need to kind of pull out my my rankings here. Maybe I'll try to fill out the draft board as best I can here. Not gonna be easy, but we're gonna try. Brandon's not that hard to to draft behind. It you'll you'll probably snipe him a lot. Don't worry, I snipe him all the time. He hates. He also hates getting sniped. So please snipe him. Someone was saying that they're drafting right behind Brandon because Brandon is probably holding the kid and drafting at the same time. Very on brand for him. I'll, I'll try to... Uh, yeah, he's not going to be sleeping. Brandon said the kid is sleeping. He's not going to be sleeping when he gets sniped and you scream. Also, you know that you're required to draft Victor Hedman now that your kid is called Victor, right? Okay, and I love that we have someone called the uh, Grand Line here. I'm going to try to keep my draft board up to date so that people can see what it's like to use uh, use the sheet. I, I, I'm telling you, though, it is hard with 30-second pick locks and narrating. Uh, but if I don't narrate as much and just kind of get strategy, it shouldn't be too bad. Am I allowed to check the tennis scores again? Oh, look at that. Swole Petey again. Hello, Swole Petey. Um, Sparrow still losing. Sparrow is losing. Let's go. Break him, Schwartzman. It's such a non-Argentinian name. God. So sad about Osaka. Okay, going back to hockey. No more tennis. Um, also, Brandon told me we got another patron today at some point. I think we're up to 40. We're up to 40. Man, you guys are awesome. 40 patrons. Hello. We are going to be in a lot of leagues this year. <laughs> not the not the worst case scenario. But, I mean, I would rather be in more leagues than less, <laughs> given that patrons are in them. But that's awesome. 40. I, d- I remember when we were talking about Patreon at the beginning of the season, we were like, ah, should we launch it? Should we not? We'll probably get like 20 people by season start. And the fact that we're at 40 and it's, early September is just madness. Hey, thank you, Jordan. Or no, Jornado. Jornado with a zero. I like it. Someone said they became a patron today. Thanks a ton, guy. Thanks a ton. I appreciate it. Uh, I know Brandon does too. Um, hopefully it, it, it uh, pays itself off. Da, 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 da. Mm. 
minute and 20 seconds. Where in the where in the world is this uh is this loading bar? Does it happen in a minute? No worry, someone said they joined Patreon once they get their life under control. I I by the way, I, I recite your comments because I end up putting this on YouTube and people can't see comments on um a Twitch comments on YouTube, so I try to make it at least, you know, somewhat have it somewhat make sense. Um Also, l- let me just uh, share with you real quick all the places our podcast like ranks. It's real weird. We we rank in like Angola. We're like the number third fantasy sports podcast in uh, Angola. I figure it's because there's probably like one person that listens to us there. We do pretty well in Hong Kong, uh, Austria, Switzerland. Um, well, I've I've been surprised. I guess we're twenty fourth in Sweden. I I how do we trend in Sweden? What's our highest position ever in Sweden? That's a place that I always thought we'd be higher in. Uh, yeah, the Angola market. We're cornering that. Oh, this is taking forever to load. Screw that. Yeah, Angola, man. We are we are absolutely conquering that. And Slovakia, seventh. Psh. Watch out. God, Brady has such a punchable face. Honestly. Just look at that. Truly, truly a punchable face. Okay, a minute and 50 to the draft. So, again, um, quick reminder, if anyone tuned in, uh, I might have to sneeze. Maybe? Nope. And muted just in time. I did have to sneeze. Um, <laughs> okay, we have – so it looks like right now we have three auto picks. Um, Jonathan Christian – maybe they'll join in. Sometimes this uh, – Jonathan is back. Okay, so it looks like we – so, oh, someone was – never mind. Um, so it looks like right now we have two auto picks uh, so far. I, I Maybe Christian will stay with us here. Fingers crossed. So I'm drafting in the seventh position, arguably the other worst spot aside from fifth. Brandon is third. Um, yeah, not the best here. So I'm going to be using my sheet and trying to keep up with it and see what happens here. Um yeah, fifth is the worst spot, hands down, because it's a toss-up and you're right in the middle of the draft. I'd say in a 12th person, probably anything between fifth and seventh sucks. I'd say five, six, and seven in 12th person sucks, and more so in a 14th person. I actually really like the ends this year, uh, either end, either the beginning or kind of the last picks. I like both of those. They're all great. Oh, of course, Bishop is too high. Uh so DC down here said it. Yeah, the bishop is way too high. I always wonder if people that are, if every single person in this mock is, you know, paying attention to the Twitch stream or is fans of us, or if they have no idea who we are. And they just have no idea that they're about to get roasted for the team they draft. Although I don't do too much roasting. Brandon's usually the person who roasts. And we're live. Okay. So Ovechkin goes first. I love it. That is the smart pick in this t- style of league. He just sets you up so well. Tons of hits, tons of shots, tons of power play points. I mean, I get, you know, Kucherov and McDavid, but to me, Ovechkin is the hands-down kind of number one consensus in this in this type of league, to me. Kucherov, McDavid... And again, I'm I'm filling out my sheet on the side too here. Um, yeah, top four are. Someone said top four are coin flips. I I'd agree to an extent. Um, God, you see, and this is where seven I think sucks. Um, from this perspective, because Sidney Crosby is the best pick. Uh, in terms of just straight up, who is the best? Um, but the problem is that I I can't like. I don't want to take centers because, again, centers are just so deep. So I'm going to take Ben Bishop. Nah, Brandon would kill me. That'd be actually pretty funny <coughs> if I did. Uh, I'm going to take Brad Marshall. <coughs> Solid pick uh, at seven. I'll, I'll take that. First round pasta, to me, that's right. Um, my sheet – here, let, let's go. My sheet has him at um, eighth overall. So I think it's sixth. He's totally fine. The 
and Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky seems to be going. I think Vasilevsky is probably one of the first goalies um, I've seen that actually lives up to their ADP almost to the dot every single time. I don't think there's a single. I think almost every single draft I've seen him go around 9 or 10 on the dot every time. Ben Crosby goes, yeah, I mean, that's it's that's going to be the hard thing is fading goaltenders. How do you, or sorry, centers. Um, how exactly do you do that? And actually, according to my rankings, um, Sagan is above Crosby, which isn't doesn't say a lot, of course, because Sagan um, was 10th last year and Crosby was 9th. So Sagan did do almost as good as Crosby last year, um, but Sagan's ADP is 22.5. I do not. So Brandon is making fun of me because last time I made my sheet, I messed up myself. And on my own sheet, I copy and pasted power play points or shots into power play points. And so people were ridiculously ranked. There's Bishop. Um, Bishop to me by grandma feels, I mean, Bishop just feels too early to me. I don't think, again, especially in a league like this, I don't think he is a top. I don't think he's a top five worthy goaltender. At least where he's going. Like, to me, so I have him on my own sheet. I haven't ranked sixth, or fifth, sorry. Um, on Vasilevsky is one. Um, oh, he was he was an auto pick. Okay, good call, good call. Um, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't calling him. But anyway, let's, let's go back to this to the sheet thing really quick. Um, so it's Vasilevsky, Bobrovsky, Anderson, Price, and then Bishop. Uh, and that's kind of the rankings that I have for goaltenders in this kind of league right now. Marner. Brandon said he's calling me. Is he calling me? He is. Okay, we can get his audio in here. Let's do that. Brandon, are you here? Oh, he's here. Hello. Okay, hold on. I am up. And, and now, you know what? Because I was answering Brandon's call, now I'm all messed up. Don't know who to take. Um, he's going to make me auto, like, Stammer. Damn, I wanted uh, I wanted to say again, even though I said I wasn't going to go centers here. Um, I'm going to go Landeskog here. A little bit of a reach, maybe. A little bit. His 80, But I'm a, that is a reach. Damn you. Damn you, you fool, making me answer you on Discord. Ugh. I mean, he's still ranked high according to me, but man, that is a reach. That is your fault. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, say again. Oh, it's in front of my... Oh, why is it on my... What? Why is that happening? <laughs> that makes no sense. Uh, everything's all weird here. Uh, what is happening? Oh, yeah, I know what it is. Hold on. There we go. There's my face. Hello. So Brandon, how is uh how is your your day going here? After you distracted me. So far the drafts have been going as expected. Also, you know what? This is actually one of the first years I feel like where you can make a mistake and you can cat you can make up for it pretty easily. Like there's been a few drafts now. I've had maybe 50% of my drafts where I either get auto pick someone stupid. I auto pick because of a um I auto pick simply because of I don't know, I run out of time or whatever and that ends up I end up making up okay. At least in my own eyes, I'm pretty happy with it, which in the past I don't feel like um was as easy. I like Flurry there right after Bob. We have three autos now. Oh, and all in the same spot too, which sucks. Oh, those are the last three.
Uh, yeah, one second. Let's, uh, let's get Brand. Let's turn Brandon up. Oh, you are you are turned up all the way, sir. So um, it would be a little tough to make you louder. I actually really like Line A in this setting. I think Line A for this type of setting is the perfect kind of pick around, you know, the middle of. The I I'd, I'd like it more in the fourth. Um, yeah, I like in middle of the fourth, fifth, something like that is fine with me. I think. Uh, Anderson, and then Headman. Okay, so for me, I'm gonna go here. After you messed me up, sir. Is Eichel still out there? Why is Eichel still out there? Yes, please. I also want Ajo. That's weird. I wonder why. Did Ajo lose? Ajo did lose eligibility, didn't he? Because he was center left wing. Okay, I need to update positions on my sheet then. Thank you for that. That's a good reminder there. We can update that. Um, I can't believe Eichel fell to me. I'm in trouble on the right wing. Rice, I like Price there. Drew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. Sucks at these um these autos at the end. So we have three autoers for those people who end up watching this on YouTube and kind of miss out on that. Because every once in a while we get a few comments where it's like, I can't believe this person went this high. It's like, yeah, well that person was an auto, unfortunately. Yeah, just like that one. And that team that team doesn't have a terrible team though. Crosby, Carlson, Barkov, and Yossi. I wouldn't have taken Yossi there, but before that, not a terrible team. This uh, this is an auto. This is an, all the three autos of the top teams, but they have an extra player. But still, it's hilarious. Okay, now it's my turn. Um, so I really want a right winger here. Uh, I'm going to go here with Gensel, I think. Um. I'm kind of between Gensel and Debrincat, but I like to. Especially since Gensel has. Uh, they both have left wing, right wing, so. Let's actually queue up Debrincat just because I'm curious where he goes. Defensemen are actually going pretty early, too, here. Um, it, is a, it is a little bit of a problem. Uh, that's what will happen with autos sometimes, though, is you have a few autos who kind of, you know, dictate a lot of the draft. You got auto defensemen. People start seeing defensemen kind of going off the board, and now you've got a problem. Where all the defensemen go off the board. Subban is early. I think that's really early for Subban. Uh, don't think that was an auto either, but I think that's... Oh, he did it. He got the PD. Oh, that's Brady Kachuk. That's not PD. Oops. <laughs> I, was opening, I thought I was opening up a picture of uh, land before PD. My bad. <laughs> so this draft so far has gone drastically, drastically different from the 10 person. Um, also, Brandon definitely got sniped. Um, Malkin there. But really... Yeah, good good catch on Patterson. I can't believe uh, Patterson. I mean, last time Patterson fell to like a hundred and something. Same exact categories. It's hilarious how different this is going than a ten person. And then Debrin Cat. That's a good place for Debrin Cat. Um, to me, Debrin Cat and Gensel are pretty much the same players. But I think that with Debrin Cat, he has more risk than um, someone like Gensel, simply because Debrin Cat, your work, you know, this this power play number, you're hoping stays up. And you're hoping he gets good deployment. 
um, with good line mates, or that that line kind of clicks again. Whereas Gensel, there's really not much in his way. He'll be top power play with, with Crosby. He'll be top um, top line as well. So I'm I'm not really worried about him. I love that you got Huberto there. That's a that's a really light pick for Huberto. And then Kachuk. I don't know what to do with Matthew Kachuk this year. Um, dude, Shifley last time went like let's let's look at uh, uh I'm curious to see. Let's take a look at Kachuk here because people say they like kind of seeing the sheet sometimes. Fortieth for Matthew Kachuk. Brady's actually ranked higher. Huh. Interesting. So let's um. Oh, I'm up. Okay. Let's look at who I want. Sorry, my sheet is in the way of this draft right now. Um, man, I really want to go. You know, Jesus, this is tough. There's just so many good centers. Um, I'm actually gonna reach for it. Reach a little bit. Further. I'm okay with Radulov there. Da, da, da. I can always blame my cat anytime it's a. Uh, anytime anything goes wrong, it's my cat's fault. Yeah, no. I w I was thinking about um, I was thinking about taking Ben there, but. I'm just not. I I think. Yeah, I need to change these. Uh, I need to change my my positions on on here. So another guy. I, I obviously I'm gonna queue up Meyer here. I think Meyer's ranked way too low here. Uh, I have Meyer personally ranked 47th in this league. The fact that he's that low is kind of insane. Um, I'm shocked. Brain Point is still there. I mean, I know Brain Point is. You know, we keep talking about how he's going to too high. Tyson Berry. I think that was an auto, but that was really high for Brain Point. Or, sorry for Tyson Berry. Um, yeah, we keep talking about how high Braden Point is, and the the thing is that he's going high, but at this point he's going way too low. <laughs> okay, I really wish there was more time on these uh, mock kind of clocks because then I could take some time to talk about my picks a little bit more it feels so i mean that would help too you know it's like <laughs> that is that is my uh that is my life just getting flustered at all times i love the crew pick there and then finally brayden point goes okay so here i i i could take a center um there's a few centers that i like that are still out there unfortunately um so I'm at 66th. Honestly, oh, here. As long as I don't get. I'm going to take Kessler. He goes to my bench, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. I'm fading defense hard this draft. It's kind of going to be, I'm going to try to see what happens. I haven't faded defense in a while. Um, I'm curious to see what happens here. I don't think it's going to end well for me. Yeah, I don't think it's going to end well for either of us. But I'm going to see what happens this draft if I fade defenseman pretty hard. I totally forgot to put my hat on. Oops. That's what it is. I don't have my Hank hat on. It's bad luck. Our, um, our scarves and beanies, or toques, get here. Ah, oh, man. Meyer did go that early. Damn it. So did Zibanejad. This draft, I got to say, this is maybe the sharpest, aside from auto picks, this is the sharpest mock we've done so far. Like, there's a lot of guys getting sniped that even Vander Kane, what the hell? Like, in a good way. God, this is, yeah, this is hands down the sharpest uh, mock we've done so far. Now, what are you doing? 14 seconds on the clock. Raquel, of course, your boy. So why... I can't believe they did uh, position changes that this early. I don't know when we're going to get position changes again. 
I'm guessing that's probably the last p eligibility change right there that we're going to get out of them. So let's look at who's... Hurdle lost his right wing. He's no longer triple eligible. I don't mind the uh, hurdle pick. Yeah, I, I swear this this is hands down the sharpest draft we've been in so far. People are going that you... It, this is like drafting with your friends where you just can't rely on ADP to tell you what's going on. You have to... You have to kind of go for what you want. Which means the guy I want is still out there. Hello, do not get that. Carter Hart, no. I really wanted Hart. Damn. Kind of hoping he'd get to me. Hoffman there is a great pick. Man, I don't want to reach for Larkin, but damn it, I'm going to have to. Because, I, like, I, like I was saying, the last one, let me see if I can find uh, the email that I got about last draft so I can actually pin, show you guys how late some of these guys went. And then Dalin goes earlier. Jesus Christ, people. Seriously making me think this time. Hmm. Yeah, I really want to see where some of these guys went last time because the genuinely just nuts how uh okay so what Dolly and then couturier okay um god i want larkin so bad so so bad uh 79th pick yeah i'm just gonna go larkin it's reach but honestly at this point i'm this is kind of what this draft is a perfect example of what i say on the podcast all the time is don't take what we say for gospel like you've got to go with the flow of your draft if people are taking defensemen this early granted i am not listening obviously but if you know i wanted to fade center's heart but in this situation people are clearly taking are very sharp and are taking guys that you wouldn't expect early you have to react to that and you don't just go off of, you know, what some rankings tell you or whatever. You have to react to that. Um, so I've got my email up here. Yes, exactly. Um, so let me throw up this draft board a little bit more so that I've got. Uh, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. This draft is going so drastically different than last time. Although I do have a few. I have Eichel again. I have Larkin again. Um, I have Radulov again, so I have a few of the same guys. Um, let me fill in my sheet a little bit here. It's making my life a lot easier to draft, although I'm going to be behind by the time it gets to my pick. Okay, and then we've got Borchek and Grubauer. And my defense and goaltenders are going to be in straight shambles. Absolute just. Uh, I was hoping, I was hoping Dumbo would get to me. That would have been. A good one. And then Hamilton. Yeah, this is this is. I have all those, and I have a bench already. Okay, so. Let's take a look really quick here at what's out there for goaltenders. Um. Wow, that is bad. Holy, that's a new level of bad for me. Um. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna go Pulak here. He's he, I have him ranked somewhat highly on my sheet. Um, let's see what I have Pulak at relative to everyone else. I have Pulak 139. His ADP right now is 136, and I have to take him 91st just because there's no damn defenseman. It's insane. It's brutal. Um. Yeah, this, this draft is taking some concentration, to be honest. Not in a bad way. I, I like drafts like this. It's been a while. I, not to say that other drafts um, haven't been sharp, but this is the first one where it feels like people are drafting for, like, for blood. Other times it feels like, you know, people might be trying different strategies. Mistakes are made. Fine. 
this one feels like people are genuinely out for blood. It's insane. Dowdy, I like Dowdy there. But, you know, this is insane when you compare it to other drafts. Like, we're at 97th pick or whatever, or 96th, and <laughs> we're at 96th pick, and Drew Doughty just went. That hasn't happened so far. Now, Ekman Larson goes, and everyone, there's so many players that are that should be going above their ADP and whatnot, but just are getting reached for in a good way. Like, it, it's clear the people here are knowing what the hell they're doing. <laughs> Troop is a great upside pick in a hits league like this. Although the thing with Truba that is a little bit of a I'm a little worried on Truba now that I read what um what uh what's his name said? Uh Dom said in the Rangers an update. It's not great. Nick Falk. Uh just that the Rangers are gonna suck. Paul Mary goes already too. Man, this you guys are good. Even with all the autos. I actually I think the autos make it worse because players aren't falling, which makes the whole draft harder. Like no defensemen fell, no goalies are falling just because they got autoed if they were there. Damn. Uh, so I want to look at where Pedersen went last time. What pick overall? Like Pedersen went seven ten last time. Uh Petrangelo and Gallagher. Okay. So I need defense here. You took Dowdy, damn you. Um, Jesus, there's nothing here. But I have, like, I absolutely have to. I mean, Gustafson feels right. Which is fine. God, I wish I wouldn't have. This, this draft in particular, I wish I would not have. So this makes me, you know, drafts like this always kind of wake me up a little bit because... If people draft like this in, like, a real draft, which, again, maybe wouldn't happen because uh, there's so many autos, but if this were to happen in a real league, I would be telling you stop fading defensemen. Like, fade centers, fine, um, but don't fade defensemen. Although I'm, I'm kind of I made out okay with Pulak and Gustafsson. I'll probably still get Ghost at some point here. Um... There's not much else down here. But Ch I want a Chabot. Damn. I think those are autos, though, right? Or is... No. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that's my pick. Damn. God, these auto picks are making everything go so fast, and I can't fill out my sheet that fast. Uh, uh okay um i mean i just have so many defenseman spots i feel like i have to take my defense actually no is he still out there oh he is uh, it's fine i'll reach for ghost a little bit of a panic pick but like i have to get i didn't see the kachuk had just gone i i have to do that um sucks there's still so many good centers out there. Oh my god, I have no goaltenders. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, wow. Okay, this was the wrong draft to uh, try out fading everything. Or maybe it was the right one so you guys can see how poorly this could go. I love that pick. Yep, yep. I just don't have center spots, otherwise I would have done it. I don't I don't get why McAvoy is getting drafted at all, to be honest. In a non blocks league. I don't I'm not big on McAvoy. I'm still mad at you for uh, messing up my my reach on Landis Gog. <laughs> I 
I I am so Oof. I mean, I know where I'm going to go for goaltenders. I just don't know when I want to go for them. That one could not have felt good. Yeah. You know who didn't go last time? Uh, oh, did he already? Is Ron? Uh, is Ronek out there? Oh yeah. He is. His plus minus brings him down in Yahoo rank a lot. Um, I like him as like a late late defense. Oh, I'm already filled on defense. Wait, it's only th oh wait no I'm not. <laughs> Never mind. I've had um someone say this is my first mock I've done this year that I'm happy with. I am. <laughs> I still I think that I still don't know how to feel about mine. Like on one hand, I don't like even. I can't believe Markstrom just went so early. Oh my god, that was the way I wanted on in goal. Jesus Christ, I just ain't good. Look at these goaltenders. I mean, Dubnik is gone, right? Good lord, this is bad. I mean, fine if we're if we're reaching here, I'm just gonna reach for Kostikov. Yeah, I so someone was saying that this is the first one they feel good about. I I don't know how I feel about this one yet. I feel like I need to finish this thing out to really get a sense of how the hell I feel on it. Um, I can't. I don't know. This this one has definitely thrown me for a loop. I'll tell you that that much. Um, geez. I mean, realistically here, I would, um, well, Kuznetsov is going really low. Like, even in this draft where, you know, it's a bunch of really smart people, um, Kuznetsov is going really low. The problem that I have with this team right now is that I don't even know if I have enough, like, firepower up top that I be able to trade like for a goaltender damn it even Kako went yeah this is this is quickly turning into easily the most conf just confusing draft I've been in so far in a it's a great draft to watch or go back to watch or have for people who end up watching this on YouTube Look at this. No goaltenders. Oh, my God. I mean, okay. As, as long as no one snipes me, I know I'm going to go around to Good Lord. I feel so bad about this. <laughs> oh, boy. There we go. Niederreiter there is a great pick. Niederreiter in my rankings is a top 100. Um, yeah, because this is the last draft of the day, uh, someone was asking if we'll go over each team. Uh, yeah, we can go over the teams after. Um, uh, Ronick went, what in the world? Ronick's going 139th. Boy, oh boy, this is a strange draft. This is... writer mantha damn you i wonder where do i have let, let me see where i have mantha ranked here this year uh I, now that i've like he's 89th if i blend all my projections after all my blended projections and such yeah that's just a little bit decent all right we got quite a few quite a few viewers today um everyone for the holidays Hank, oh, I accidentally turned on audio on my on Twitch on my phone. Whoops. Wow. 
I mean, I'm still trying to figure out the goaltender situation here. You are so screwed. <laughs> like, there's no goaltenders left. This makes me very scared for uh, our, like, normal drafts this year. <laughs> or our listener leagues. If they go like this, I'm going to be shocked. Yeah, I... Barzell, that late is a good pick. Again, I think that the the position to fade this year, if you're in a very smart or sharp league, is center. Hands down. And yet again, of course, I go Eichel and Larkin again. Or Where are you going? <laughs> Oof. Just anybody, I guess. God. I forget Yahoo Standard. Is it three starts for goaltenders in a week? It is. Okay. I mean, I know what I'm going to do here. It's not good, but I know what I'm going to do. Pierre-Luc Dubois is still there. Wow. Wow. Backstrom. Dustin Brown is a great pick there. That's another player that I think is getting faded so, so hard. I have him ranked like 60th um, in standard Yahoo without plus minus, not counting plus minus. Um, I think everyone in this would want to try to trade for goaltenders. <laughs> I think. I don't know. In the rankings. Oh, my God. Yeah, they do hate me. Uh, I guess I have one more pick, but still. Oh, Lord. Okay. So, because it's three start, I don't really have many options here. I'm going to go Darcy Kemper. Just guarantee starts every week and just hope that Arizona team wins me some games. <laughs> that would be a team to... <laughs> that is a strategy. So, if this were... Um, I actually would not... If this were like a real league, I think what I would personally do actually is not take any defense now from here on out and take and wait for Joel Parison to be in the wait for Joel Parison to be in the like added to Yahoo and I'd pick him up. Yahoo, this person is auto. Can we not um Yeah, they do. I think they do the whole like random thing where it makes it, they want it to feel like the person's a real person. I know. And yet they still like do random times. That's a good value for Bertuzzi. Uh, Hornquist. Okay, what do I do here? Let's go to my player rankings. So I actually, I'm. I don't know why Pierre-Luc Dubois is still there. He really should not be there. Uh, although I'm kind of leaning... Ooh, I might do Reinhardt. I maybe do him next. Dubois is too good. I can't help it. Uh, he should not... I have Dubois ranked 60th. 66th. And he's still there. He shouldn't be there. According to me. I mean, he gets you the hits. He gets you. He's going to be fine in points. I think he's getting faded way too hard. Um, there's Sam Reinhardt still out there, which is good. Another guy that's getting faded pretty hard that um, is James Van Riemsdyk. He's an interesting option this year from a shots perspective. Um, can really help the team out. Like I said, I, uh, Reinhardt went, yeah. Yeah, Reinhardt was a good pick. Tom Wilson there. Man, Tom Wilson fell far in this draft. Which is smart. That's he should fall pretty far, somewhat far, but that's that's great. That's great value. I think that's too far. Josh Anderson. Yeah.
it's Josh Anderson. I wouldn't in a if this were a real league, I definitely would not. I think I have to. Uh, Edler there is great. I know ever I mean, obviously like, you know, Edler people are kind of wondering what's up with Edler, but Edler is still in good shape. He's just not going to get as many power play points. Your goaltending is yikes. Like, easily the worst goaltending draft so far for either of us. That, yes, don't know. It is easily the worst. And Jernet goes, God damn. What time is it? Okay, well, I still got time till the Nadal match. Very excited to watch Nadal today. I hope he does not blow it. Kachernak. Man, what am I going to do next? I don't even know what. Do you? I like JVR still. Uh, Kadri is actually an interesting center. Right here. Um, there's JVR. Damn it. Should I take Justin Williams? I don't know. Uh, is, I'm going to take Jason Zucker. <laughs> yep. Have him ranked in the... I have him ranked 100 flat. That feels good. For me? Nope. Oh, I have three defensemen already. I, I'm just not getting my fourth defenseman. Yeah. So do you. I'm, I wonder if they'll let me... Will they let me fade defenseman here? Yeah, that's a great last round pick. Especially in a draft that's this sharp. He got auto... Yikes! That's a yikes, Sergachev auto. No! I want a Gusev. Damn it. Damn it, John. That was a good pick. Rope hints actually going. Man, this draft feels deep. Deep, 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 deep. I like the LeBanc pick there. I was kind of eyeing him because of the dual eligibility. Um, well, look, here's one option I'm contemplating. Uh, if I'm allowed to do this. Oh, is he taken? Crap, I missed the JT Miller pick. Um... I Furland. Uh, yeah. And I don't take a fourth defenseman. Because I wait for I'd wait for Parison. Uh, I'd also I probably maybe would have thought about doing Gudas there instead. But Oh, the actually likes me quite a bit. Interesting. I'm guessing I'll fall as How do I only have 35 wins? Arizona is definitely going to get more than 35 wins. No, but I have both Ranta and Kemper. Arizona is not getting 35 wins. Why are they projecting Arizona for 35 wins? What? That seems weird. And yeah, there we go. Now I fall. Yeah, I agree with uh, Jornado in Twitch said uh, he thinks Kreider gets traded this offseason. Fully agree. Or this season, sorry, not offseason. But yes, he gets traded this season. We talked about it a little bit on the uh, Metro preview. Yeah. I like Galchenyuk. 
Dude, look at this. Can we can we take a second for this? Also, wrong team picture. David Perron. My dog is Cone. He's whining. So some notable people that did not get drafted. Um, Eric Stahl. Eric Stahl's. Ryan Johansson didn't get drafted. I'm 31. You, wow, you really did not care about the plus minus here. Okay, so let's go over these teams really quick. Um, let's go over Brandon's first. So he got Connor McDavid, Jonathan March, so Huberdo, a lot of Jonathans, uh, Huberdo, uh, Raquel Wheeler, Tarasenko, and then everything starts to fall off a cliff. Uh, <laughs> Drew Doughty, Jacob Truba, Jeff Petrie, Mike. Oh my God! In the bench, Hoffman, Trocheck, Mantha, Anderson, Galchenyuk. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't make up for how bad your defense is, though, and your goaltenders. Your goaltenders. Dude, your goaltenders, though. Quick and Riddick. Eesh. Eesh. That's bad. Okay, let's go to my team real quick. Um, I still don't understand this win situation here. <laughs> How are they both projected for only 35 wins? Doesn't really make any sense. I think they're better than if they're that's way too low. I think uh I think Arizona's more of like a ninety five point team. Um okay, so we've got Jack Eichel, Dylan Larkin, love those two centers. Uh two top thirty centers in my rankings. Brad Marchand, Gabriel Landeskog, Jake Gensel, Alexander Radulov. I love my forward core. I, I love my forwards and then everything I mean, my defense is just <laughs> Oh man. That might be the worst defense drafted in a mock since we started doing mocks this offseason. Pulak, Gustafson, Gostas Pear, good lord. And then my bench is fantastic in Kessel, Svechnikov, Dubois, Zucker, and Furland. I love my bench. Lots of uh, dual eligibility there too. Um, I'd probably try to make some trades for defense there. I don't mind the goaltender situation that much to be honest. Um, it's kind of, it's whatever. I'm going to lose shutouts quite often probably. Um, other than that, I don't feel awful. Okay, let's go to Felix, who actually won the draft. Um, look at that defense. Now, that's what a defense looks like. Not that I would know. Uh, Steven Stamkos, Claude Giroux, great two picks. Uh, Philip Forsberg, Brady Kachuk, Brock Besser, Nino Niederreiter. I like that a lot. Not super high on um, Nino this year. I think he's going to be shuffled around in the lineups a lot, but still like a great, great forward core. And then Dustin Bufflin, Tori Krug, Matt Dumba, and Pareko. I think Pareko is droppable at some point in the year. Pareko just doesn't have any opportunities at top power play. Vince Dunn has jumped him on that uh, depth chart. There's just not really many opportunities. So I think that Pareko is droppable from a defense standpoint, but fine. That's a you know that's a good one. Um, Kuznetsov is if Kuznetsov, Bertuzzi, Schultz, and Kadri. I love that bench a ton. Yeah, they yeah they are. Well, they I think they do them equally. It's the same way that I do like the standardized scoring, but it's all equal and it plus minus shouldn't hold that much weight. But anyways, back to this. I I love that that bench. Um, Kuznetsov was a fantastic pick. I think they got it at one twenty ninth. Uh, if we look at what I have Kuznetsov ranked, uh, let's see. I have him ranked forty third. That's a absolute steal, <laughs> absolute steal. And then you couple that with a Bertuzzi type, uh, Justin Schultz. So this on this team, I'd probably swap in Schultz for Pareko and then drop Pareko, personally, um, or try to kind of make some kind of move there. Uh, but other than that, I love this bench. And like uh, the person actually was, is on Twitch and mentioned that the Giroux can play wing, so it's fine that they have two centers on, on the bench, and I agree with that, especially when you get a guy like Kuznetsov, who's an absolute steal. Always put Kuznetsov here. You can throw in you know Giroux for Nino Niederreiter, and you put Nino on the bench, and that's a hell of a top core. On, in goaltending, uh, Vasilevsky and Mrazek, great two picks. I mean, Vasilevsky is so good that his save percentage and goals against average will make up for any kind of deficiencies that Mrazek will have, and your goals against should be pretty unbeatable with a team like this. 
Uh, let's move on to Jonathan, who got second. Uh, again, you know, plus minus is being weighted so damn heavily, but still can't lie with with the uh, score for now. So Tavares, Pavelski, uh, Ovechkin, uh, Debrincat, Arvidsson, Zuccarello, Morgan Riley, uh, Giordano, Wierenski, Ellis, Monahan, Couture, uh, Edler, Stahl, uh, Bobrovsky, and Dubnik. Now, I don't remember if Jonathan might have been an auto pick or auto team, um, but too many centers here. I get the Pavelski center right wing, but still three of your positions are centers. Um, yeah, you shouldn't have that many centers. Great goaltending here with Dubnik and Bobrovsky. Dubnik is a top 10 goaltender in this league, in my opinion. Usually has good goals against average and save percentage. Uh, even last year in a down year, had 9-1-3-2-5-4. So he should get better this year. Um, so you're going to be pretty hard to beat from a save percentage, goals against average perspective. Defense is great. Riley, Giordano, and Wierenski. Uh, Wierenski, obviously not the greatest pick, but a really good third defenseman. Ellis is good. I think for this team, I'd say make a pick between Ellis or Edler as your fourth D. And then maybe try to trade a center here, probably immediately. I think I'd probably try to trade for a defenseman and get a really, really good fourth defenseman because the rest of your lineup is pretty damn good already. Um, maybe Zuccarello is the only one that's the outside the guys outside looking in. Um, I actually haven't looked at what his rank is on my sheet yet this year, but he's 144. So, yeah, he's kind of replacement value in a way as a starting position. So I'd probably try to use these centers to try to upgrade that right wing position. Okay, moving on to Fur. Two R's. Uh, Sagan, Ben, um, Braden Shen, Anders Lee, Elias Lindholm, Kale Granlin, Burns, Hamilton, Ekblad, Muzzin, Point, Hornquist, Miller, LeBanc, Price, and Bennington. Love the goaltending in Price and Bennington. To, uh, obviously, you know, we've talked a lot about Bennington, but getting him 41st is kind of fine. Uh, I have him ranked 11th. His ADP is around 49, so getting him 41st is fine. I don't know where he went relative to other goaltenders, um, but that's a fine place to get him at. Carey Price, to me, is a top five goaltender this year. Uh, he's a beast. Best goaltender in the league, hands down. Um, and then up here, I like the centers. I like the, the gamble on Jamie Benn. It's not bad. These wings are scary to me. They're good, but they're scary. Uh, they require a lot of uh, – they need things to go right. Um, Granlin is obviously great. I, I, getting him 152nd is fantastic value for Granlin. But a guy like Lindholm over-indexed last year um, by quite a bit. Of course, they projected him down, which is good. Anders Lee, fine. I'm not that – I'm not a big – I'm not a big Andrews Lee guy, but he ticks a lot of boxes. I just think that this is a good floor, not a lot of upside, and the floor is a little low to an extent. Um, and then, a okay defense. Um, Ekblad and Muzzin, to me, are fine. Uh, Muzzin, I don't like that much. Uh, I like Ekblad in this league as like a fourth D. Um, maybe not necessarily a third D in this situation. I like the bench a lot, though, in Braden Point, Hornquist. Miller and LeBanc. And then this kind of was saying you can, you know, move in Jamie Ben to a wing here and then have kind of a, you know, a Braden point going as the usual center. Um, so I, yeah, I like this team a lot. I think I'd try to upgrade a defense spot here um, between Ekblad and Muzzin, try to upgrade the third defense. Um, and other than that, just kind of, you're, you're just hoping that these wings kind of overproduce in a way because um, there's not a lot of upside there to me, at least. Um, going on to fourth in DC. Uh, Elias Pettersson, uh, Tomas Hurdle, Artemi Panarin, Tevu Teravainen, Nikita Kucherov, Willem Nylander, uh, John Klingberg, Oliver ekman Larson, Quinn Hughes, Provorov, Barzell, Ehlers, Green, Perron, uh, Fleury, and Hart. Good. This is kind of what I was talking about, fading centers. I love these three centers here in Hurdle, Pettersson, and Barzell. I mean, Barzell is a top, top 60-ish player. Uh, Pedersen, I think I have him. Let's see where I have Pedersen ranks for this setup. Of course, and again, remember that I do not rank using plus minus. I don't care about it. Without it, uh, Pedersen is 36th, so that's a good pick there. Uh, Panarin, uh, Tevu, Kucherov, and Nylander, those are some good wings. I, Nylander has bounce back potential, obviously. Uh, Klingberg, Larson, Hughes, and Provorov, this is a pretty good... I like this mix of peripherals and points between these defensemen. I don't think you need Mike Green. I think Mike Green is pretty much droppable. Um, so, yeah, the, someone was saying that he was kind of a panic. 
so yeah, you can drop him and pick up Clef Bomb or Dunn, which he was mentioning. Uh, so I, I, this is fine. It's kind of ignore this pick, I'd say. But Ehlers, Barzell, Perron, good picks. Uh, I don't even know if I pick up a defenseman here, to be honest. I'd probably pick up a forward in this situation. Um, just because your defense is already pretty good. I think the only place you'd want to pay attention is Quinn Hughes because he's not going to get you many peripherals. So that's where you might start to see a little bit of a lack on this team is peripherals. I think you've also got you've got a few shooters here. Doesn't shoot very much, doesn't shoot a ton. And you've got someone like Quinn Hughes who doesn't shoot that much. Uh, not that many big volume shooters on here. But other than that, a really damn good team. Um, who else? Let's go to Jordan real quick. Uh, are we doing this in order? Yeah, let's, let's go to Jordan. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, Evgeny Malkin, great two centers. Malkin falling to the fourth round was insane. And then Line, Kachuk, Ronton, Palmieri. It's such, such good forward core. This might be my favorite forward core that we've gone over so far, um, just from a coverage standpoint. You've got peripherals covered um, with Palmieri. You've got a lot of high-volume shooters, um, lots of high points upside. And then they went peripherals on the defense, which was awesome. Uh, Risto, McAvoy, Chernak, and Gudas. And then you've got still Evander Kane on the bench. You've got Chris Kreider on the bench to get you hits. This, to me, is, in my opinion, the best team. I think and this might have been an auto. I'm not sure. I don't I don't think it was an auto. It might have been. But I really like this team just because of the way it's composed. Um, this is how I like composing my teams normally, is you get points plus peripherals on the defense. Uh, and then on the bench, you can also get some of the some of the perifs. So yeah, Brandon said that Evander Kane was not an auto, which he's right about. Um, so I don't know how much of it was an auto. Maybe some of it, maybe uh, 50% of it. But other than that, fantastic team. Um, Backstrom was fantastic value at 148. I have him ranked... Let's see here real quick. I have him ranked 63rd. So fantastic value in, in, in Backstrom. Then Hellebuck and Varlamov are two good goaltenders. I don't know about um, Varley. That's the big question mark, but you already have a guy like Hellebuck with volume, and the save percentage should be fine. But yeah, I think this is probably the best team. Um, any other team that I should go through? Grandma was pretty much an auto pick. Um, there's Ringgold, who I'm not sure if they were an auto pick. Um, but lots of peripherals, which is good. You see a lot of hits. Another one of those situations where I don't know if you need Sam Gerard here. Um, don't think Gerard is really necessary on this team. I love Dustin Brown. This team might actually be able to trade for points um, instead of and, and kind of take advantage of their peripherals. If you look at hits, who's first? I guess they're they're right there in hits. They're not the highest, but yeah, Jonathan. If you look at Jonathan, the team I was saying is the best. They're first in a lot of things that I like. First in hits. First in shots on goal. Um, Kind of towards ish the top in power play points, not far off from the top. Um, yeah, you see this. I think this was an auto pick. Not great. Um, anyways, I have two minutes here, so let's go through Richard. Um, because Richard was watching, so I want to go through Richard real quick. Um, Mika Zabanajed, Sean Couture, Taylor Hall, Dadna, Pasternak, uh, Tom Wilson, Hedman, Latang, Petrangelo, Ronek, Skinner, Kopitar, Reemsdyke, and Athanasiu. So going to the goaltender really quick. I like the two goaltenders in Rene and Markstrom. Uh, you make up for the kind of lack of volume in Rene with Markstrom. And Rene is going to get a great save percentage, so you'll be fine in save percentage. And goals against average, you may get beat every once in a while just because Markstrom will have a bad game. Uh, but for the most part, you'll make up for that with, with Rene. As for the forward core, again, kind of another team that's proving to me to fade centers. Got two great centers kind of back-to-back. Uh, 67th and 78th and Sean Couturier and Mika Zibanejad, which I have them both. Let's see here. Zib, Zib. Zibanejad is 30th um, by my rankings, so he got him 67th. That's great value. Um, and then Couturier, I have 53rd, so both of them great value from 60th and 70s. So yeah, centers to me are some are a position you should fade. Got Taylor Hall, Dadnov, Pasternak, and Wilson. I love these three. Tom Wilson, of course, will give you kind of the, the hit stats. Um, maybe some, not a lot of power play points. I was going to say a little bit of point upside, but not much. And then you've got Hedman, Latang, Petrangelo. This is maybe the best defense that was drafted. I have 50 seconds, but Hedman, Latang, and Petrangelo and Ronek. Tons of upside there. Uh, lots of points as well, which is nice. 
And you've got Skinner, who has a ton of goals. Kopitar has a lot of bounce back candidate. Uh, and of course, you can put uh, Skinner kind of in a wing or a center position. Uh, Athanasiu, Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk to me is maybe one of the biggest sleepers. Um, I think maybe I would may- potentially try to trade a center in this situation. Um, just because you got Zibanejad so late and he has upside, maybe you could trade a center for a wing to upgrade Skinner and Wilson. But other than that, you... Uh, this, this team looks good, and I'm about to run out of time. So there you go. I'm going to go probably make dinner, get ready for the Nadal match. But other than that, uh, thank you for watching, listening, whatever you did. Look at this awful team that I drafted. I did terrible this draft, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I think if you fade centers, you're going to do good. Because if you don't fade centers, uh, the problem you're looking at is you take centers early, and then other people are going to take advantage of, of defense and whatnot, which is what's kind of happening uh and it, and it seems like kind of you can make up like you said like i said in jonathan's team you can kind of get peripherals and defense and everything okay that was a ton of fun that was a very very sharp 12 person draft thank you guys so much for tuning in watching and everything i'm gonna go watch some tennis we'll have some episodes next week on draft strategy thank you for watching